We have our uh, eight volunteers today, and I'm going to give them an opportunity to go down uh, the line, uh, a brief introduction of themselves, and uh, then we'll start with some question and answers. Please. Hello, my name is Ranger Erickson Crow. I'm a second lieutenant infantry officer in this uh, fine United States Army. I went to University of Vermont and Champlain College in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, some of my best memories at Ranger School, other than being struck by lightning, and uh, that was fun, uh, electrifying. Uh, other than that, having to tie two of my buddies to a tree in Mountain Phase due to their physical state. Rumble. Good afternoon. I'm Ranger Anthony Rombold, second lieutenant in the Armor Branch. I'm originally from Clarion, Pennsylvania. Uh, my favorite memory of Ranger School would be uh, being able to complete the course after being struck by lightning and uh, Rangers Carvalho and Crow saving my life. I'm uh, Ranger Mike Janowski, second lieutenant infantry officer from Texas. Uh, and my finest memory of Ranger School will occur tomorrow at about 11 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ranger Shea Haver. Um, I am an Army brat. I'm from 4th ID. Um, and my favorite uh, memories of West Point, or of, uh, I was a graduate of West Point, my favorite memories of um, Ranger School will probably be the fact that I only had to do mountain phase one time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Ranger uh, Michael Calderon. I'm a staff sergeant in the Army, uh, currently stationed out of Fort Carson, Colorado. Uh, currently working as a sniper section leader, and uh, my favorite memory is definitely going to be uh, the lightning strike. It's a pretty shocking experience. So, uh, I'm Ranger Chris Carvalho. I'm a medic from 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. Uh, I went to Arizona State, enlisted in the Army, and now I'm here. I'd say my favorite memory from Ranger School would be uh, seeing Ranger Rombold take his first breath after I was doing CPR on him for about a minute. I'm Ranger Kristen Grice. I'm a captain in the 101st Airborne Division, originally from Orange, Connecticut. And my best memory from Ranger School was finishing rap week for the final time. <laughs> I'm Ranger Hagner. I'm originally from Berlin, New Jersey. I'm a second lieutenant in the Armor Branch. Um, I had a lot of fun moments at Ranger School. Uh, they all happened in the DFAC, but uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll start our questions and answer. We have about an hour right now. Again, one question, one follow-up. David Martin from uh, CBS News, please continue. First of all, congratulations to, uh, to all of you. Um, but I'd like to ask the two women, how does it feel to be the first? And what would you tell other women who are probably now going to try to follow in your footsteps? Uh, I would say that it's definitely awesome to be part of the history of a ranger school in general. So graduating with these guys next to me and the, the 90 plus other uh, ranger students that will graduate tomorrow uh, probably will be one of the highlights of my life. To the other females who plan on coming, I hope that they come with a strong mind. That's what it takes to get through here. Uh, just like everyone sitting next to me here had to do to make it to tomorrow. Yeah, I feel pretty much the same way. Um, I'm just happy to be done with the course. Um, I just came here to try to be a better leader and improve myself, and I feel like I did that. And for other women who have that same goal in mind, just keep that goal in mind, and uh, you know, just don't lose sight of it, and just keep reminding yourself of why you're there, and they'll be fine. Uh, Jim Mikleshevsky with NBC News, also for the two women, no surprise, I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, what made you pursue the armor ranging, the ranger course? What, what made you come here to do that? Uh, second, uh, at any time during the training, did either one of you think about quitting? Did you ever reach that low point where you actually thought about quitting? Uh, and then the third part, well, why don't you do those two and then I'll do a follow-up. Roger. Uh, sir, I've definitely wanted to come to ranger school for the last couple of years since I learned about it at West Point. Um, I had a lot of mentors and peers that were training up to go, and so they really just motivated me to get in that mindset to try to improve myself as a leader and be the best officer I could be. So that's been about four or five years now. And as far as, sorry, what was the second question? Did you ever at any point oh, think I feel like about quitting. quitting? I never seriously considered it. I definitely had some low points, particularly in the swamps in Florida, but uh, I never actually thought anything was going to be too difficult, that it was worth uh, leaving the course. 
Well, um, I, I decided, um, actually, I didn't really consider coming to Ranger School until the Aller Act was posted. Um, that's just the military message that was posted uh, last November, stating that they were gonna open that course up to females. Um, I had a very supportive chain of command uh, who encouraged me to do so. Uh, and the reasons why I chose to come were the same as these men here, to get the experience um, of the elite uh, leadership school that the Army has to provide, um, to give me the opportunity to lead my soldiers the best that I can. Um, seriously considering quitting uh, throughout the course, I think I would be um, crazy to say if I didn't. I don't, the men can back me up on this. There's definitely a point uh, you hit uh, along the way. It doesn't matter where it is. It's all different for everybody else. Um, but the ability to look around to my peers and see that they were sucking just as bad as I was kept me going. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they can probably say the same thing, so. And do either one of you feel like you've broken new ground here? That you've opened the way for other women to not only pursue ranger training, but actually to go beyond that to actual uh, positions in combat units? Uh, I think the decisions to open up further combat units, of course, will be up to senior leaders in the military. But I do hope that with our performance in Ranger School, we've been able to inform that decision as to what they can expect from women in the military, that we can handle things physically and mentally on the same level as men, um, and that we can deal with the same stresses and training that the men can. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, just uh, this, to further on that point, I think if females uh, continue to come to this course, that they can possibly, you know, they can be encouraged by what we have accomplished. Uh, but hopefully, they're encouraged by the legacy that the Ranger community has left, and that that's good enough. It was good enough to make us come, uh, and it was good enough to help us, uh, you know, force ourselves through, uh, and to eventually graduate tomorrow. Jim Michaels, USA Today, please. Um, yeah, for the two women and then also for anyone who, who wants to weigh in as well, but did you feel any sort of internal pressure uh, on yourselves as you were going through the school that, you know, that, that you know, recognizing that you were the first in, in the Ranger course? And also um, uh, for the men, if, you know, what that was like going through a class that for the first time had some women in it. What, what, do you know, were there any specific challenges or any differences or anything like that? Um, I would say I felt some internal pressure because I knew how badly I wanted to go when I was a second lieutenant um, before I became a platoon leader. I was hoping to go to this course because it is the best training the Army can provide and I wanted to have that training before I took a platoon. So I was thinking uh, really of future generations of women that I would like them to have that opportunity, so I had that pressure on myself. Um, and then just other than that, you know, not letting people down that I knew believed in me, people that were supporting me, so. Um, as far as males uh, in their, I guess, mind, uh, what was going through, what was going through my mind at least, um, you know, you're, you're way too tired and way too hungry to really honestly care, um, but I know I mean, it's in the back of our minds, obviously. We, we were aware of what's going on, but in the end, at, at the end of the day, it was everyone was a ranger. It, it didn't matter. It, you know, everyone was a ranger. It was the same throughout, as long as the team pulled through and accomplished the mission. Yeah, I mean, I used to caveat on that. Like, when we were given resupply and you're given 2,000 rounds of machine gun ammo, the last thing you're caring about is whether or not your ranger buddy's a man or a woman because you're not carrying all 2,000 rounds by yourself, so... Dan. Uh, yes, thank you. So there's a lot of scrutiny in my view. I'm sure you're aware of it. There's a lot of questions about whether standards were lowered. We've already heard, we've already heard at some length from uh, the leadership here that that's not the case. Um, but do you, do you feel like at, in any way that has diminished your accomplishment or, you know, get frustrated when, when you've kind of caught probably in, at least in the last day or two some of that conversation? Uh, and I guess this really goes for men and women. Uh, Dave, do you mind if I take that question? Sure. So, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I know my first experience with the women in Ranger School was during Rap Week, and uh, one in particular event that stood out in my mind would be the the 12 mile ruck march, in which we had about maybe 50 pounds plus whatever weight we carried in water in our backs, and uh, the women, these two women at least, and the third that uh, is still in the mountains right now, finished 
well ahead of some of the males and well ahead <laughs> well ahead of 60, 60 other men that didn't even complete the Iraq march. And so right then and there, that was what validated it for me to say, hey, these women are for real, they're here to stay. They're carrying the same way we are and they're, they're doing the same stuff that we are. And that was uh, what really solidified it for me. Yeah. And uh, in regards to standards, I went through Florida, luckily, twice. And I went through a uh, all-male class and then a female integrated class. So I was able to see what a non-female integrated class would look like in Florida and then what, once they got there. And the, the, the class was exactly the same. If anything, it was harder due to the climate because uh, I don't know if it's been breaking any records, but it was, it was hot, really, really hot, this uh, cycle in Florida. And the previous cycle that I went through before, which was in uh, early, late June, it was a lot easier due to the climate. And, uh, so if anything, the standards were the same, but the climate made it just harder for them and for us all together. I'd appreciate your perspective as well to, to the two women, please. I can't really speak to uh, previous classes prior to 615, but I can say that um, recycling through Darby uh, on our third time, they were equally as hard and equally uh, as challenging. Uh, the RIs are relentless no matter who, who you are. Um, and I think that the men can attest to that. Uh, we weren't the only ones that were recycling. We weren't the only ones that went forward. So um, equal standards across the board, um, equal challenges, and um, ultimately we ended up uh, here today together, so. And I think Ranger Janowski put it pretty well. When your squad gets 2,000 rounds of ammo or you realize that you're the weapon squad and you've got two machine guns to carry, I mean, you look around and there's only 10 of you or so and everybody, all of a sudden, the men really don't care at all that you're a female. You're carrying some of that, and you feel the exact same way. You're going to help share the load as much as anybody. So we felt like we were contributing as much as the men, and I think they felt that way, too. Jonathan, Fox News. Follow-up to uh, Jonathan Sarah with Fox News. Um, Follow-up to that. I know in the heat of training, uh, you became gender blind, and it didn't matter uh, the gender of your, your fellow soldier. Uh, but I'm wondering if any of you before the training um, perhaps were, were skeptical about whether this was going to work out and if your minds were changed. Any, does that apply to anyone there? So I was, I was pretty skeptical. I went to school with Shay and I knew she was a physical stud. But I was skeptical of whether or not she could handle it because I was fortunate enough. This is my third time at Ranger School. I've been med dropped twice before. So I saw what Ranger School was like before entering this class. And I was skeptical if they could handle it physically. Then we got to mountains, and there was one night we were doing a long walk. I was the 320 gunner, so I had a lot of weight on me, and I was struggling. And I stopped and I asked a halfway point, hey, can anyone help take some of this weight? I got a lot of deer in the headlight looks. You know, a lot of people were like, I can't, I can't take any more weight. Shay was the only one to volunteer to take that weight. She took the weight off me, and she carried it the last half of that rock. Literally saved me. I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. If it wasn't for Shay. So from that from that point, no more skepticism. I knew she was gonna make it straight through. Anyone else? I'll I'll chime in on that. Uh, I was also a little skeptical. Uh, skeptical. I didn't uh, go to Ranger School any times previous before this one. However, I just was I guess ignorant and assumed that because they're women, it was gonna be harder for them. Once I was uh, with Ranger Grice through Darby Mountains and uh, Florida. Once I got to know her, I uh, was in no way skeptical anymore. She had completely changed my mind along with uh, Ranger Haver in, in Recycle. I recycle with her. Um, and I have another a story uh, similar to Ranger Janowski's. I carried the saw for about three days, and I was like, okay, well, I need somebody to take this for me. And I went to every single person just in a line, no order. And they're like, no, I'm, I'm really tired too, I'm broken. And as soon as I went to Ranger Grice, this was about the, la the last day of Mountain Phase, she was like, it would come, like, wanted it from me. She basically took it away from me. And that, so all nine guys were like, well, I'm too broken, I'm too tired. She, just as broken and tired, took it from me with like, almost excitement, which I thought she was crazy for that, but maybe it was, <laughs> she was just motivated, and that's how she is. Thank you. Any, any other former skeptics? Or does that take care of all of you? I think, honestly, I was pretty skeptical, too, about their being able to handle the, the pressure with the ruck and just the physicality of the whole event. And uh, honestly, that was smashed pretty fast. Um, every one of them, I got to know 
a few of the other females who didn't make it through were just absolute, ab absolutely physical studs. But I think the main issue that some of them were running into is just tactically, they just weren't proficient enough just because they aren't in those combat roles yet. And, uh, and so where I was completely believed that they were going to just run into the walls of just physical walls where they would just break down, that was never the issue. Thank you. Anna. Anna Mulrine with the Christian Science Monitor. just want to say congrats to all of you guys and, and, uh, and to you two women, too. It, it is a, it's a pretty big deal, and it's, and it's historic. So, uh, so, so when, you, you know, when you think about the history of this moment and, and all those thoughts you know, that you're trying to keep in your mind, I'm sure everybody has their own kind of personal mantras. They're trying to get through such a tough physical challenge. You know, I mean, I'm just curious what it feels like to hear from, from the two women, to hear your fellow soldiers, your fellow rangers now, um, say these things about you. You know, I mean, what does this mean for you to hear them saying it? I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool that they have accepted us. Um, I think that we came... Uh, we ourselves came to Ranger School a little bit skeptical, you know, like with our guards up, ready just in case, the, you know, the haters and the naysayers. Um, but we didn't come with a chip on our shoulder like we had anything to prove. I think that we came uh, our best prepared that we possibly could be. Um, and just in mind, the same as the men, uh, that we were going to take one event at a time uh, and to continue through. So I think that the battles that we won uh, were individual and the fact that at each event that we succeeded in, we kind of were winning hearts and minds as we went. Um, but that was more important to us, becoming teammates with, with our Ranger buddies that we're graduating with tomorrow um, than you know, making a statement, whether it's for you know, females of the future of Ranger School or females of the future of the military, whatever it was, um, just personally for ourselves in our leadership role. Uh, becoming one of the teammates that we could be trusted just like everyone else, whether it was on a patrol or to carry something heavy or whatever it was, uh, that every single time we accomplished something, that it gave us that extra foothold um, in, in being part of the team. So I, I can say without a doubt that the, that the team that I'm graduating with tomorrow um, accept me completely as a Ranger, and I'm, I couldn't be more proud uh, and humbled by the experience to graduate with them tomorrow. And basically, that's where we stand with that. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, it's really a relief to hear that. I think coming to Ranger School, my biggest concern was that I might not be able to um, carry as much weight or not be able to meet up to the same standard. But every single task we had, I definitely tried to do that. And then some, I mean, I tried to do as much as I could. And I saw everybody else helping each other out. And you just try to be the best uh, teammate that you can. And I think. That just is what is showing right now that we were able to do that. That's great. And okay, go oh on. yeah, and, and just when you know you heard uh, when you guys got the offer for the day one recycle at Darby. I mean, what was going through your mind? And and for patrolling too. I think there's been a lot of questions out there also. You know, what makes patrolling so hard? What what are the big challenges there? And I'm just wondering if you guys can talk just a bit about that. Well, when we went into the uh, brigade commander's office after we'd failed Darby twice. That was generally, we were pretty much thought we were gonna get told we were dropped. Uh, we all asked for a recycle, and we knew that really wasn't an option. And then I was willing to take whatever, you know, he was gonna give us. Um, and then when, so when he offered the day one, I just immediately accepted it without thinking about it. And when I left the office, I was like, all right, <laughs> okay, day one. But I was definitely glad I took it. I didn't, you know, hesitate to take any chance to continue the course. So I was glad I did. It was just kind of daunting for the next three weeks after that. But it's a good decision. So that day we weren't the only ones to, you know, receive the offer to do the day one. Um, I think that it definitely took a little, like a little gut intestinal fortitude to decide to do that. Um, but same as Kristen, there was no hesitation. Uh, we decided right then and there if that's what it was going to take to get our tab, that's what it was going to take. Um, so just, just like anyone, I guess, who has, who was in it to win it, uh, that's what we decided to do, and it obviously worked out. And just briefly on the patrols, any, anything to add on that front? 
uh, why just the what made it so tricky you know what, what was yeah. when when we heard ah, they you know when sure. we're all kind of watching your progress yes. and when we hear about it and we hear okay well they they did awesome on peers you know right. that they so just hit those out of shortly the, the, patrols. the patrols I think are difficult uh, for any non MOS um, coming to this branch this is obviously an infantry uh, based school and the tasks that are required of you are tasks that are trained in the infantry MOS schools and their basics um, specifically so anyone coming from a different branch uh, would have a little more difficulty adjusting. Um, I don't think that we felt in any way that we were um, at a disadvantage more than any other uh, branch that was not offered the same training prior to. And yeah, along the same lines, um, I didn't feel that, I mean, when we went through it, it was definitely a humbling experience. We thought coming here, we were a little more prepared than we turned out to be. Um, but looking back, as we actually did start passing patrols, looking at how I was the first, the first time I tried and the second time, I actually realized how much I learned at Ranger School and just going through the repetitions, how beneficial that was to developing some sort of tactical sense um, as opposed to when we first came in where we were going a little bit more just by the book, I think. Um, so we realized that it really is an advantage to be in those infantry units, in the combat units, and coming in from an outside perspective, I think gave us that Disadvantage. Mr. Crow, did you have anything? Chuck Williams, ledger, please. Um, for Lieutenant Haver and Captain Grice, uh, this is a follow up on the uh, day one. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Arnold and others said when y'all took the game one, the day one, it was a game changer. From your perspective, was the course any different after May 28th than it was before May 28th? Do we have anybody that recycled needles? Hagner? What is it? Recycled you recycled with this? Uh, I can I can feel that first. Uh, for I was in the started in the May class, and then I recycled with uh, both Rangers Grist and Haver, and there was absolutely no difference between the two classes themselves in Darby. I didn't make it past Darby because I recycled, so I can't comment on the other two phases. <laughs> <laughs> However, everything was was completely the same. It was, uh, besides the company I was in. So there was no change as far as Darby, and I didn't go into rap week with them, which I'm very thankful for. But, uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, yeah, standards were exactly the same. I can caveat on that a little bit as well. Uh, when they re recycled into 815 and started with us during a rap week, I know we lost probably close to 60% of our class, high 50% of our class. I think those numbers in themselves speak volumes uh, as how uh, physically and mentally demanding rap week alone is and for them to have done it twice that's pretty impressive if you ask me okay jay price. jay price with npr congratulations to all of you um i want to start this one for i want to do this by gender but i want to start with the men um and maybe i'll pick on second lieutenant ron bolt since he just came back from the dead and might have some special insight he brought back <laughs> After going through all this with these two women, do you have any doubt at all that women can handle most or maybe even all of these combat jobs they're excluded from currently? I think as far as the policy goes, you know, that's something that's best left to the senior leaders in the Army. But, I mean, as far as we've clearly seen women here in Ranger School, they can handle the task physically and mentally. So, I'm, I mean, I'm curious to see what kind of doors this will open in the future, however. I don't really want to comment as far as, you know, whether whether these doors should be open now and it's kind of above my pay grade, but <laughs> yeah. Um in Ranger School you, you build bonds through hardship and physicality. Uh and that's something that everyone in this room who has a Ranger tab understands and we connect that way because of the Ranger tab. And uh, I can say that I would always rather have someone with a ranger tab to my left and right when it came into combat situations. And I don't care if that's a male or female, if they have a ranger tab, I want them next to me. And these two females have showed themselves that they can serve by my side at any time because I know I can trust them and I hope that they can trust me. So I, personally, I think, especially with these two, I have no issues or qualms with them serving next to me in combat. And these, these kind of conversions, some of you said you had skepticism about this until you went into it. Um, 
what's the range of opinion among the other men that you were out there with? Did, did any of them have anything different to say? We can't uh, really speak for the opinions of our Ranger buddies. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own opinion. I'm not really sure if anyone... I don't, I don't know what their opinions are, to be honest. Every other Ranger I've spoken to in this class has just said the same thing. that the I mean, there's a standard, and standards were met for Ranger school, so that's basically it. I can speak as far as in our squad. There's not a single, because I was in the same squad as Ranger Grice, there's not a single male in there that would not say the same thing I'm saying, that there was one standard as the Ranger standard. And it wasn't even the training made us blind to uh, the gender. It was the like qualities of Ranger Grice that made us blind to the gender. Because she was strong and determined. And female or male, it was the person that made us change our views. And the peer evaluations that we fill out on every one of our squad mates is what will show the opinions of those who served in the squads with them. And both Ranger Haver and Ranger Grice peered very highly. Okay, one more related. One follow up, sure. Okay. And, and to the women, do you feel like you can serve in most or all of those combat jobs that aren't open to you now? And do you, do you feel like women are already serving in combat jobs? So I think in the past decade that we've been on deployed, females have served in those combat roles. Uh, I myself am uh, attack aviation, um, which I plan to continue to serve in my role as an aviator. Uh, so uh, I can't really, I can't speak to uh, what other females will decide to do if those doors are open. Um, what I can say is that I plan to stay uh, with aviation as far as that'll let me go um, and hope to uh, serve as far as leadership will let me continue in my position. Um, yeah, like we said kind of consistently, it didn't seem to be like the physical aspects of it or the mm -hmm. mentally demanding aspects of it that were so difficult. It was just the lack of tactical training that I think we had originally. And I think if the same training is uh, provided to women in the same courses and women are integrated into those just the same way men are into those branches, I think they'll have the same opportunity for success. I mean, it's just speculation, but based on our experience here. Um, congratulations to you all again. Um, I did have a question for uh, the males, and that's, you know, there's been, this is obviously a big event. You know, we're all here, we're all pummeling you with questions. I, I, you know, how, is this, how has this experience been for you? far as being involved in this this is kind of an historic effort I mean it's rather than just I'm going I got my slot I'm going to Ranger school awesome I made it I mean has it changed at any can you talk about that well, I think anytime you're involved in a historic event it's pretty cool for instance if we weren't in this class we wouldn't be sitting here in front of all of you uh, but I mean as far as you kind of hit on it before as far as the whole gender thing goes when you're out in the field you really don't see a difference. Personally, I didn't work with either of these women out in the field. Uh, my squad was all men. Uh, the only time I worked with the woman was way back in class 615. Uh, she did not make it through the course. So maybe my opinion is a little different than some of these gentlemen who worked with the women. But when you're out in the field and you're, you're starving and you're tired and cold and miserable, you really don't think about the gender. Yeah, I'd have to agree there. Um, no differences, especially you're just so tired to even care. Um, and honestly, it seemed like I guess what would be a typical Ranger class until we were all struck by lightning. And then that was, <laughs> and then it got a little weird from there. And so, anyone else? Richard, New York Times. Yeah. Thanks, Colonel, and congratulations to all of you. I would ask, uh, I'd like to ask two questions. First to uh, Captain Grice, because Lieutenant Haber already answered this, but what would you like to do in your career? Um, uh, you know, obviously some doors still have to be open, but if they were open, would you like to be infantry? Would you like to uh, do special operations or anything like that? And then second to the men, we have heard quite a lot about how well their peer reports were, and we've heard even from, from some of the people in brigade that, you know, they, they did better on that than, than most of the other students, if I'm characterizing that right. But I'm, I'd be curious to, to the other men, if you guys could talk to the, to the men here, if you could talk a little bit about um, kind of tangibly what, what kind of things, what kind of characteristics and traits they have that, 
that made you all rate them so highly on the peer reports? I mean, a couple of you mentioned the uh, caring stuff when you were really uh, hurting, but w were there other sort of qualities, leadership or otherwise, that, that they really uh, kind of shine through all the time on, or what, what sort of thing led you to, to rate them so highly? Um, I'm definitely interested to see uh, what new doors do open up for women. I think special forces would be something that I would definitely be interested in um, if my timeline permits for that. Uh, currently, I'm trying to pursue civil affairs, which is under the special operations umbrella that is currently open to women. Um, but there's also several other options out there. I'm honestly just not very decided about it. Um, but that is something I'm looking at pursuing. Um, if it if more opportunities do open to women, definitely. As far as the peer evaluations go, I was Ranger Havers, uh, Ranger buddy throughout. Uh, we went straight through together. So I filed, uh, filled out three peer evals on her, one after Darby, one after Mountains, and one after Florida. The way peer evaluations work is it's a simple form. You go through and you rank the Ranger one through, in this case, 10, because that's how many we had in our squad, 10 being the worst, one being the best. Then you uh, mentioned a couple of characteristics of theirs. Uh, dependability, I wrote about how I trust her with my life. Uh, she proved it, she earned that, that respect for me. Teamwork, I mentioned stories like how she carried weight no matter how bad she was hurting. She was always the first to volunteer to grab more weight. Uh, natural leadership ability despite not having as much tactical knowledge as some of the others. Uh, then at the bottom of the form you write, will you go to war with this ranger? I, put, I would go to war with her every single phase. And would you share a foxhole with this ranger? Again, I put I'd share a foxhole with her every single time. And of course, she peered very highly on mine because I would not be here right now without her. So that's how peers work. To, uh, to caveat with that, I was Ranger Grice, a battle buddy through mountains and through Florida. Those are the times I got to do peer evaluations on her. And long, the other qualities was like initiative, dependability, teamwork. Uh, I always put her high in dependability because I could depend on her, but it was you could see it throughout the entire platoon, not just the squad, uh, because every time there was any kind of planning that had to happen, she was always getting pulled from our squad to help whoever the platoon leader that day was, because they knew that they could rely on her to do whatever that task in the middle was. So it happened so many times that some of the ranger instructors were like, she needs to stop being the person in charge of routes. You guys need to do land nav too, which I was really upset with that, because I'm bad at land nav, and I'd be thrown into the gauntlet. But. <laughs> Either way, uh, all the attributes, like initiative, go, always going to the middle if she needed to, uh, always, all of them are very high. So I always rated her in the top five of my peers as well. Um, okay, maybe see, sure, quick, then we'll go to. Hi, I'm Sarah, I'm with ABC News. Um, I'm wondering, looking back um, for the two women um, at your road here, um, you know, do you have any special female mentors who you really look up to or any mentors in the military who really helped you get to where you are? Um, and then, you know, within the course of Ranger School, um, was there any sort of uh, camaraderie between all the women who were going out for this? Did you sort of like band together to help each other or sort of just do your own thing and focus on yourself? I'd like to say my mentor, I guess, growing up was Mia Hamm. I was a soccer player, and that's I wanted to be her. It was awesome. Um, I've always been an athlete, so I think that that's kind of what drove me um, to be physically fit and to accomplish the things that I had to do for uh, Ranger School in general. Um, so there's that piece. Um, I guess the banding together of women at Ranger School was non-existent because we were spread to the four winds, different companies and things. And honestly, I think that that was very important. Um, we immediately integrated within our squads and became teammates that way. Uh, and it wasn't about, it was never about um, the women, you know, trying to um, beat the men through in ranger school or the women banding together for any reason <laughs> in ranger school. So when, when you're sucking, it's, it's the person immediately next to you. And how we were dispersed throughout uh, the companies didn't afford for a woman to be there. And quite frankly, I don't think we needed that support. We just needed that support uh, from our Ranger buddies next to us. So we intentionally, um, I think, tried to rely on our squad mates because they're the closest to us and uh, not the females around us. Uh, I'll say from my um, perspective, 
there's a, kind of a scarcity of female mentors, I think, in the military. So I really didn't have one until I got to my current unit, the 716th MP Battalion. And uh, Major Barrett was my executive officer. And I just remember her, we did a, like a unit triathlon for fun. It was kind of like a fun game week. And I just remember she beat every man that had competed, including after her bike seat fell off, she finished the bike race um, and the 5K ahead of everybody. So that was pretty inspiring to me. I remember thinking I need to like step up my game when I saw that. Um, and then as far as otherwise, um, like mentors, it's really more among your peers. I think even at West Point and once we met all the other women who had gone through RTAC, um, that was pretty inspiring just to meet these other women that had the same interests as us because we are pretty far dispersed throughout the Army. Um, and you just look at one another and realize what they're doing that, and that kind of motivates you to push yourself harder as well. And um, I think, you know, there's just a great appetite to hear what your experience going through Ranger School was. If each of you could say, uh, you know, one memory, what it was like in your own words, maybe the hardest you know, day that you had or something that really stuck with you? I think there was like three hardest days of my life every week going through Ranger School. <laughs> <laughs> every day I was like, no, this is actually the hardest. Um, for me, really, I think the swamps, both in Darby and Florida, were just frustrating. You're going through at night, um, you're either cold or extremely hot, one or the other. Um, and you're walking under night vision for hours on end. You don't know when it's going to end, tripping over things. It's just generally frustrating. Um, and then definitely taking a day one recycle and going through rap week again was very difficult mentally. Uh, any night movement whatsoever <laughs> under nods? I'm pretty sure if it was a flat road, I could find something to trip on. Um, but <laughs> I, don't, I, I honestly would like to hear this from the guys, what their hardest work is. Swamps. 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 Day six of mountains, walking up the mountains with the soft or what felt like 12 hours. When you move through the swamps in Florida, you're not allowed to use night vision. And so if there's no illumination from the moon. And with the uh, cover of the swamp, like trees and all that, and the mangroves, you can't see anything. You literally can't see anything besides the person vaguely in front of you. And you're not allowed to use any of your slings for your weapons. And some of the weapons weigh over to 30 pounds. And so you're carrying through, you have vines going under the water, which you can't see, and you're just tripping and falling and essentially drowning for four hours, <laughs> just uh, trying to make it to a rope bridge to re-enter the swamp on the other side and then continue drowning for four more hours. So I have to actually swamps. disagree with him because uh, I broke my prescription iPro on day, <laughs> day four of the Florida FTX. So... The only time I was on an even level with everyone as far as vision was in the swamps. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, even though that was probably one of the worst movements for me, uh, it was the only time I could actually see as much as everyone else, so I was happy. <laughs> OK. Thanks, uh, Corey, Star Stripes. Uh, Corey Dixon with Stars and Stripes. Um, I'm going to ask you all to look forward to tomorrow, um, which I know you guys all are. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of for all of you all, whoever wants to answer. Um, but tomorrow morning when you have that Ranger tab pinned on, what's going to go through your head? And what uh, is it a sense of relief? What, 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 what's going to go, go on there? I think that the work is just beginning for all of us. I mean, we all know when we pin that tab on, it's... I mean, it's the legacy that you're carrying on. You carry on for the rest of your life, and it's something that you need to you need to show to your soldiers and those around you every day that you're willing to go that extra mile and you're willing to work that much harder for them and to lead them. Yeah, after going to Ranger School, you get beat up pretty good. You, you like to think that you're still in shape. You can, we can carry a lot of weight, but running across the parking lot, get out of breath pretty quickly. So I'd say, yeah, I got to pin that tab on. You got to get back in shape real quick because the standards got to be upheld. No time to waste. There, there's a saying that uh, a lot of the Ranger instructors like to say to us every phase and basically every time we're looking like we're hurting, which is uh, Ranger School hasn't started yet. It's just beginning today. Um, and during during the actual course, I was like, well, no, it's, I'm pretty sure I'm in it. But <laughs> uh, I'm coming to realize that, that is true. Like I said, you need to get back in shape. There can't be any excuses because you see all the great leaders of our Army, they have Ranger tabs, and they didn't have excuses. So as the new 
group of people moving forward with TABs, we have to be just as strong as them and have no excuses and show the legacy of the TAB. Uh, for the two female rangers, I wanted to know what advice you'd have uh, for other women who are perhaps considering um, trying ranger school. And you know uh, to what extent there's an interest among other women who haven't tried. Is there going to be um, many more uh, that you're aware of that will be trying? I personally know a lot of women that are interested in going. And for whatever reason, um, whether it was timing or deployment or they're in some school at this you know, at this point in time, they weren't able to go to this assessment. But I definitely know many very qualified women that I can think of that could certainly pass the course or at least make a very good attempt. Um, and I would definitely encourage them to go. And I would just say keep doing what they're doing. They're motivated. It's really more of a mental challenge than physical. If you mentally know you want to get through um, and you have to want to get through, then they'll be able to make it. Uh, I think that it takes a whole lot more will uh, power and mental capacity to pass um, than physical capacity. I think that any um, semi-sane female who wants to do uh, an attempt at this course uh, will prepare themselves physically enough to accomplish the tasks um, or very nearly meet them. Um, but something that you can't really prepare yourself for, something that we've never uh, had to deal with because we've never been admitted into courses like this is that mental aspect. Uh, so, and it takes a certain kind of person. So, um, just realizing that the mental, the mental side of the issue as you come is going to be the most challenging thing that you will ever face. Uh, and exceeding that, that, my advice is to, uh, once you get to that point, keep going and to realize that your mind can take a whole lot more than your body can. I think there's one common denominator, and this is not gender specific, but I feel like every one of the 96 Rangers who are graduating tomorrow said in their, their mind, they say, hey, you know, quitting's not an option. We're going to stick this out, and we're going to do what needs to be done to get our Ranger tab. And I feel like anybody that comes to the school with that mentality is going to get their tab, and whether they do it in 61 days or whether they do it in, in uh, three quarters of a year, you know, that sets on them and maybe a little bit of the RIs or the Ranger instructors, depending on what kind of mood they're in, um, that they, they can get it done. It's just a matter of not quitting and uh, doing what needs to be done. Janine. Hi, Janine Donaldson from WTVM. I just wanted to say congratulations to everyone here. Um, but for you two, we talked about who your role models were, but did you guys ever think that you, you know, you're trained leaders, you, you lead squads, you lead platoons. How will you be good role models now that you are stepping into that position, whether you realize it or not? So I think um, how we got to the position that we were in in general was that our chain of command saw the potential leadership uh, in us from the beginning. Uh, I think that the support that I received, especially from my chain of command, um, afforded me to come and have this opportunity. If I was a dirt bag, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have made it to this point. So um, I think that that's for you know the men as well. So whatever opportunity that you're presented, you take it and you run with it. My um, my ability to be a role model, awesome. Um, but I have been commissioned to be an Army leader, period. Uh, and I'll continue to do that until the day I get out. And then some. Yeah, and I think um, kind of what we were talking about before, about how we're going to feel tomorrow when we pin on that tab, you're really taking on a lot of responsibility because there's a lot of expectation with what goes on or what to expect from somebody who wears the Ranger tab. And I think knowing that you have to uphold that legacy every day you can't really have an off day. You can't be tired. You need to go the extra mile. Just constantly having that in your mind and having that respect for the Ranger tab uh, will keep us as good role models. Russ, AP. Hey, I'm Russ Bynum with AP. Again, congrats to all of you. Um, curious, Captain Greist and Lieutenant Haver, how did you prepare for Ranger School? I'm sure there are a lot of things you weren't prepared for, but what did you do to get ready for this? Uh, personally, I like to run, so I definitely ran a lot, trying to get make sure I was just meeting the first physical standards for that first week of Ranger School, uh, Rap Week. It's a five-mile run under 40 minutes, so I made sure I met that standard. I increased my upper body training to meet the push-ups and chin-ups, 
and uh, I did a lot of land nav to land navigation practice. So those are the biggest things I was focused on. I felt once I got through rap week, I had to get over that hurdle, and then I could learn some more and focus on the rest afterwards, possibly three times in a row. <laughs> Did you? Oh, um, no, I mean, uh, I think that uh, your body is a machine, and I like to fuel the machine, so I ate lots of food. Um, I worked out as much as possible, but I didn't really have a whole lot of time to prepare. Um, I was at NTC and doing my job uh, prior to doing this. Um, I don't, guys, did you do anything special to prepare for Ranger School? I gained weight. <laughs> I literally we gained ate, weight. We ate food. Yeah. Um, because you're gonna, your body's going to go through a lot of uh, changes while you're at Ranger School. I, I individually, I lost 26 pounds in about eight weeks. And um, I definitely plumped up a little before I came uh, because I knew I was going to be losing a lot of weight. Dan. Uh, that actually relates to the question I had. Physical transformation through Ranger School, um, uh, especially to women, but really the men as well. Um, how many pounds did you lose while here? And in terms of like how many push-ups could you do versus, you know, as your body breaks down over time, where do you think you would be now? Yeah. My body doesn't like to lose weight, so probably I gained, I tried to gain weight as I went in. I probably put on five to 10 extra pounds. Then I lost that. And then when we recycled, I probably gained it back and then lost that again. So it wasn't a huge um, discrepancy for females as much as some of the men losing 20 to 40 pounds. Um, but we were also eating two MREs a day, which is more for a woman than it is for a man, frankly, in terms of calories. So, I guess being Ranger guys, about, uh Ranger buddy, my body wanted to make up for her not losing weight. So I lost about 30 pounds. Uh, and that was after I gained weight on the recycle. And then I lost, so probably overall, like 35 to 40 pounds is what I lost, um, which I think I've already gained back somehow in the last couple of days. And as far as like doing push ups and anything like that, uh, I'm not even sure if I could do 10 right now. <laughs> Give me a week or two, I'll probably be back up to 15. But. Uh, yeah, it's definitely deteriorated my body a little bit. But. In the rap week, when you get smoked or punished for something, you, for hours on end, you'll just push ups, sit ups, anything, Y squat, anything that they can do. Where in Florida, the punishments seem equally as bad, but they'll be like, all right, five push ups. <laughs> and you'll just be like, oh my God, like I can't do that. Uh, and it just, it's funny to watch your body just deteriorate rapidly, as humorous as that can be. Chuck, do you have a. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, Jim from NBC. Okay. Uh, Need to get the uh, you know, uh, mic up. Mic, please, Jim. Oh. Thanks. Both you ladies have been very modest, uh, and it's admirable about your achievements. Uh, uh, but uh, we've been told time and again the significance of having that Ranger tab, uh, that it sets you apart from many other of your peers, sometimes above your peers. Has it? really sunk in yet exactly what you've accomplished here? Uh, I think for me, the biggest accomplishment was just that it was a goal I've had for so long. Um, I knew I wanted to do it five or six years ago when I was a cadet, and I saw I had a mentor who brought me into his infantry mentorship program because he knew I was interested in ranger school. And uh, just to be able to see that goal through, he said I could join as long as I met the same standard as the men. At the time, I couldn't meet the same standard. And just to see my own progress um, over the last couple of years, as I was a platoon leader, I took a lot more, um, I guess, responsibility for my own physical fitness and my own uh, leadership abilities and tried to improve to where I am now. I think that's the biggest goal for me, or the biggest achievement for me, really, was seeing that I was able to accomplish that more than I don't know, anything else really. And personally, what does the Ranger tab mean to you? It, it was always just about trying to get the best training that the Army could offer us to be the best officer um, for my soldiers. And so I feel like I finally have reached that level where I've gone to that training. Obviously, I can still continue to improve every day I'm going to, but being able to achieve that level of training was an accomplishment for me. 
So prior to this accomplishment, I think the biggest accomplishment of my life um, was getting into and then graduating West Point. Um, I remember going and visiting the campus with my mom before starting Beats Barracks and the feeling of pride that I accumulated as I stood there uh, on the plane and kind of thought about the history that it provided completely overwhelmed me. And I knew that's exactly where I wanted to be, um, that I was going to take it and I was going to run with it. And that whatever jokester just let me in, this, <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking, but I was ready for it. Um, so to graduate from that academy and be part of the long gray line um, was something huge and something that I can keep pride in for the rest of my life. So that being said, graduating uh, Ranger School, same type of historical significance to me, uh, the same sense of pride, and the fact that I'll be standing there uh, with my Ranger buddies that are here right now, um, the significance of that to me I will have lifelong significance personally, um, but not only that, being, being part of uh, something that has been esteemed, I think, by our nation for so long, same feelings, same uh, well, well up of, of pride, I think, uh, and personal accomplishment comes from just that. Jim Michaels, USA Today, last question. Thank you. Um, as, uh, as the Army looks forward and the military services in general look forward at further integrating uh, various MOSs with both men and women, um, how important is it um, to keep the standards uh, the same. Again, that was done in Ranger School, but this process is a larger process and it's, it's moving into the future. Uh, what would you tell policymakers, if you could, about uh, keeping uh, the standards where they are? I think that's extremely important as they, if they do go forward with opening uh, further job opportunities in schools to women. The, None of us wanted, no woman that I know wanted to go to ranger school if they changed the standards because then it degrades the, what the tab means. Um, it would lower training for everyone and reduce that quality of training for the entire Army. So I don't think anyone wants to see that done. Um, maintaining the standards is absolutely imperative, I think. Um, and kind of towards the other question that was just asked, why that's important is that, you know, we're leaders in the Army. We're expected to do you know, what we ask of our soldiers and then some. We're, we're supposed to be leading from the front, being able to do more than we ask our soldiers to do. So having something like the Ranger Tab, going to this school, getting this training shows that you are putting forth that effort. You do have the determination to achieve those tasks and accomplish that stuff. I, I think Ranger School can be a fantastic example to the other uh, programs that do open up for women, that if you maintain the standard you've had for however long, you're going to get people that can meet that standard, Fem females or males. You're going to get people that have whatever virtues or f physicality, the characteristics that meet that standard. And if you lower it, it's just going to be lowering it for, there's going to be men that sneak through the cracks that really shouldn't. So maintaining that standard is pivotal to have good soldiers and good leaders in our military. I think the bottom line is what it comes down to is if the standards are lowered, and whether that's to allow women in a combat role or whether that's to allow more soldiers to enter the army or whatever it may be, if the standards are lower, it could cost American lives if we were to enter another combat situation. And I don't think that's something that anyone should be willing to compromise for. It should be about quality, not quantity. Anyone else? Okay, panel, great job. Thank you very much. We'll have a uh, ranger uh, Stanwich and Renault and uh, Carvalho uh, stand by uh, to follow up on some of the uh, adventures that they suffered uh, or experienced, I shouldn't say suffer, sorry, and uh, in the uh, Florida phase. So, panel, thank you for your time and volunteering and telling our story, and uh, we'll dismiss you at this time, okay? Thank you, thank you very much. Sir, sir, sir. Yeah, you yeah, you too. Yeah. Okay. If I can have your attention, I know there's some concern and interest to get moving out of here quickly so we can file to meet deadlines. We want to be cooperative in that regard. So let's finish up what we need to do and then uh, follow up with some quick questions uh, where applicable and then let's get our kit uploaded and get on the bus.